Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. It's Dan Hennig here, uh, your today, today's host. Hope you're all well. Hope you all can see me, give you a little wave. Um, and we're just at the top of the hour now. We'll give it a couple of minutes to let everyone come to today's webinar. I'm sure you're all very excited. Um, maybe some of you are new to Powtoon uh, Business today. Maybe some of you are looking for a little bit more inspiration. Well, I can tell you I'm here to help you today with that. Please feel free to uh, ask any questions throughout the webinar today because I'll be very happy to go through those. Um, and you know what? I think we'll start with a couple of shout outs. If people would like to tell me, um, you know, what they do, their, their current job role, what they're looking to get out of today's webinar. That would be really fantastic. And I'll be very happy to give you a shout out. out. I can see Pete from the UK um, and he is a HR um, administrator and he's looking to create onboarding uh, templates for his team. Fantastic. Hi, Pete. Nice to meet you. Hope you're well. It's very, very sunny here. Um, I'm based in London, very sunny in the UK today, which is nice for once. Um, really, really enjoying the weather. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to give a shout out and just let me know where you're joining from, what your current role is, and what you're looking to get out of today's webinar, that would be absolutely fantastic. I can tell you that today's webinar will be recorded, uh, so it will be sent out to you tomorrow at some point, so you have that to view in your own time. We'll just give it a couple more minutes while we wait for everyone uh, to join us. Um, yeah, so I can see a couple of shout outs to uh, Sarah in Barcelona. Hi, Sarah. Nice to nice to see you here. And you're a project manager looking uh, to create. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading that looking to create engaging and dynamic videos on sort of the project timelines and things like that to be able to distribute to your colleagues. That's absolutely fantastic, Sarah. Um, that's exactly what you can do with uh, Powtoon. You have so many different options to create, whether that's using real look videos or animated videos or explainer videos, whiteboard explainer videos. Powtoon can really do um, absolutely uh, everything and today we're going to go through that. I'm going to take you on a, a journey through the workspace and through the studio, helping you to get set up and ready to go. Um, yeah, so fantastic. OK, so maybe just one more minute. Um, please make sure you've got a, a drink. I've got some water with me or maybe you have a coffee. I'll just take a sip there just before I uh, get going. Um, and I can tell you that the time is uh, five, nearly five past five in London, um, and that would make it around 11 a.m. on the East Coast. I believe that Central European time would be 5 p.m. and Pacific would be around, sorry, 6 p.m. and Pacific would be around 9 p.m. So welcome everybody that's just joining in. Um, I think what we'll do now, we'll get on with the uh, show. So just to uh, quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Daniel Hennig and I've been at Powtoon for around two years now and a customer success manager here working with lots of organizations varying in different sizes who are creating, you know, whether it's an um, IT rollout video, whether it's project management reviews, whether it's a HR onboarding videos, you name it, literally every use case under the sun. Um, the customers that I work with are, are creating uh, for that. And yeah, I, I basically help organizations get the most out of Powtoon. And I'm really looking forward to taking you guys through this work, through this webinar today. So just take down my email address because uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, please feel free to reach out after today's uh, webinar. So I'll just move on to the next slide. And what we're going to do, we're going to get started with templates. And I'm going to show you a quick sort of four step way to creating Powtoons quickly and to get you used to Powtoon and up to speed with everything. We'll go through the studio walkthrough, complete walkthrough, showing you some tips and tricks along the way. And we'll look at how you can export your Powtoon, lots of different options there. And we can have what I say Q&A at the, at the end. But to be honest with you, 
happy to answer any questions that you have throughout this webinar. So I think what I'll do first is show you a quick Paltoon, um, well, a quick video, sorry, that is just explaining exactly what Paltoon can do. So I'm just going to play that for you now. Just make sure that we can hear everything and the sound is there. And I'm just going to hit play. And this is a very short, powerful video that explains what Paltoon does. Nothing has the power to convey complex ideas as easily and with as deep an impact as animation and video. Powtoon is a visual communication platform that empowers you to create your own animation and video in-house without the need for technical or design expertise. Explain a concept with cool characters, awesomeize live action video with text and overlays, describe a complex process using whiteboard animation, or present data in an infographic. Powtoon does it all, and it's easy. If you can make a PowerPoint, you can create that wow factor and bridge the gap between your ideas and your audience with Powtoon. Okay, I'm not sure if you could hear, hear the music there. Um, I think uh, uh, Kay has just let me know that you may have not been able to hear the music and the powerful voiceover done by in-house in by Nick, our marketing guy. Um, unfortunately, if you couldn't hear that, I can send this out after and you can have a little watch. But basically, that showed you what Powtoon can do and the different types of Powtoons that you can create. It's not just an animation platform, which is our heritage and where we first started out. But we have now morphed into what you what we call a visual communication platform where you can create lots of different types of content and distribute it in different ways. So without further ado, I'm going to come away from this and this and we're going to go straight into the workspace here. OK, so ooh, bear with me. That was a, a quick a brief introduction into what I was going to show you. But here we are in the workspace. So once you've actually accepted the invite, you will be taken directly to the workspace and you'll be asked what you're looking to create essentially and what are your goals. So if I actually start with that at the top here, this whole workspace is brand new to Paltoon and it is customizable and we are improving it um, every, every month with input from our customers and also ideas that we want to implement. So for example, here at the top, you can customize to ensure that the right use cases are coming up in front of you via the workspace. So for example, here, we could look at um, different things from corporate and internal comms to employee engagement. And essentially, this will bring up the templates, which is the best place to start with Partoon. And I always say familiarize yourself with the templates in the first instance, because that's going to get you up to speed and that's going to make help you understand how Powtoon works. So, for example, if I pick corporate and internal comms, which is a, a very large use case um, that a lot of organizations are using Powtoon for, we can just click on that, click save, and you'll see that the tiles update. If I click on any of these from workplace communication to company storytelling, it will take me directly to the templates that align with these particular use cases. From the, from the workspace, you can create a new video from a blank canvas if you click here. You can even start building your own characters because we have a character builder inside Powtoon and you can do that directly here from clicking on that tile and you can start to build out characters and add branding to them and align them with the content that you are producing. I'm not gonna go directly into that now, but you can do that straight from the workspace. On the right hand side, you've got um, toolbox here. And here you can see my Powtoons and you can see all the different Powtoons that have been created. This is, a, I suppose, your folder structure, so to speak. And here it's really easy to create lots of different folders. You can see that I have lots of folders here from GIFs to miscellaneous to user stats to brand books. This is what I use to help me streamline the video creation process. It gives me great visibility. It gives me, um, you know, it, it, it keeps me organized, so to speak. Um, 
and helps me navigate and find the power tunes that I'm looking for. Very easy to create a new folder. You just click new folder and you can create um, a folder very easily. And once that folder has been created, you can then, for example, take a power tune like this one here and we can click the three dots and we can click move to. So if I click move to, okay, I think that actually duplicated, but if we click move to, I can then go to demo and I can click move. Very easy to do. If you wanted to just select um, lots of different power tunes, so you can see this is really the only power tune that I have that is singular here rather than in a folder, you can just click this, this will come up and again, you can move it to. But what's great about the business platform is that you can share your power tunes with your colleagues. So you can collaborate, um, you know, work together, talk about different ideas and help make your power tune even better. So for example, if I wanted to share this particular power tune and I'm part of a team or a project or a folder, uh, as long as you are part of that same team with that colleague, then you'll be able to go to the three dots and click, um, you'll be able to click share with team and there's a toggle options here to add to a particular team and you just click it on and off and then you can share. So that's one great thing about the business platform, very easy to do. Um, I always recommend when you are building out your teams that you have an approved, approved branding folder, maybe with some brand books in there, like down here. Um, and you can essentially make sure that everyone has access to the different um, scenes that you've created, to the different characters that you've created, to the different pieces of media that you have created, to the different cartoons that have been created. You want to be able to share these all with your team because you want them to save time and effort and also for them to have access to the right content that they, they, they need to have access to. So this is your um, folder structure. And, and just lastly, a very new feature that it is only uh, is exclusive and only available to corporate and enterprise license holders is the translation feature where you can click the three dots on any of your power tunes, click translate, and this essentially brings up the options of different languages you can choose. This creates a CSV file, and once a CSV file is created, all you have to do is fill out uh, column five, which is the targeted language, and you fill out that and then all you'll need to do is once you fill out the CSV file and save it to your desktop or a folder on your PC or Mac, you can then import it via a translation file and you can import it via here and then you can drop it right in to the Powtoon and it will actually create a translated Powtoon for you. And that will look something like this file here. And it will essentially, the CSV is created so you can add in the target language, but it also names the naming conventions, names the particular power tune. So when you upload it, it becomes, you know, the Spanish example, or whatever it may be. Very easy to do. So I'm going to come back out to the workspace. You can see here there's some featured templates here. Here are some of our newest ones. Um, if you are a team admin or org admin and you have the ability to actually build the team's folders and uh, that I talked about before, you'll see this and you'll be able to see the number of licenses that you, you've used and how many you actually have left. If you go into here, which I don't really want to go into too much detail, but this is essentially where you build out the teams and having an approved branding folder structure like this. And it's imperative that everyone is part of each individual folder. So they're able to see, for example, the different images, the different stock footage, the different logos. This is my demo account that you can see. And underneath the approved branding, you have all the different projects, use cases that people are working on. And again, it's important that you have all the right people part of this team, because if you don't, you're not able to share cartoons, characters, scenes you've created or pieces of media that you've uploaded. So I can also let you know, just thinking about it, that we have a great learning center here as well with tutorials, webinars and blogs. The webinars in particular, if you click on webinars, will take you to Powtoon Labs, 
We've got an array of different webinars to choose from. And in particular, some of them are really on point at the moment in this one, how to make branded characters that celebrate diversity and inclusion. We had someone from a large elevator firm come on from there that I work with who is creating lots of content for their on-site engineers that actually was distributed via mobile. And she had seen really, really high engagement rates of 200 to 300% increase. That's a particularly good one to watch. But also this one about being able to um, basically talk about um, and create a a powerful story that you can tell when you when you are creating your your pieces of content. The lady here from Accenture, who's been there for 25 plus years, is a global marketing comms executive. Very very good indeed. Now I'll just move back into the workspace, and I can tell you that there are actually quite a few different ways to create a Powtoon. Okay, so firstly, you can create from scratch. You can also import. The second way via PowerPoint, drop your PowerPoint directly into Powtoon. We'll add some default scenes and transitions to that. And you can then really start to jazz up your PowerPoint because we've all been there. We've created a PowerPoint, but we're not too sure that people are really going to sit up and take note. Probably more likely to be looking at their phones, to be honest with you, because we know the saying death by PowerPoint. Take your old PowerPoints, drop them into the Powtoon studio and make people sit up and take note. Make them more engaging and dynamic. So that's another way really easy to do. Just click on it and upload your, your PowerPoint. And thirdly, actually, thirdly is Adobe Photoshop. You can, if you have access to Photoshop, you have storyboards within Photoshop. You can drop them directly into the studio, just like with the PowerPoint side of things. And again, you can add all the different objects, props, characters to that to make it even more engaging and dynamic. And that's the third way. But the last way, um, my favorite way, the fourth way, is templates. If you click on templates, this is where you want to really start familiarizing yourself with and really have a good look at the different templates. And, you know, the, for example, this is a new one. It's just training template here. And what's great about these templates is they have music built in. They have all the, the footage, all the content built in, and they're all fully customizable um, and you can change them as little or as much as you want so yes you can look for that particular use case that you're you're looking for but it you know for example this particular template on a training overview doesn't mean you couldn't use it to create an onboarding video because you can change the content change the colors and change the objects that you see or the footage that's in the background and then you've repurposed that particular template now, I've got a question here um, from Kay. Can you share it with people who have a license? Yes. So anyone that has a business license, you can share any PowToons that you've created, any media that you've uploaded, any scenes that you've created, and any characters that you've created. So it's all really, really easy. And I'm going to show you how to do that inside the PowToon Studio. It's very, very easy to do. Now, I'm just going to go back to these templates here. You can see there's all these different options here digital change management, learning development, all these lots of fantastic templates, you know, from a COVID-19 update that you can see. Have a look at these. Have a look at them. Do you like the way they move? Do you like the way they function? Do you feel that you can work with them? Because if you haven't got too much time, one to two hours, and you want to quickly repurpose a template, I'm going to show you now my guide of how to create something relatively quickly without too much stress, saving you a lot of time and effort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this particular template, this culture values one that actually Amazon used and repurposed it by adding some characters with the Amazon logo. Um, and they actually posted this uh, to all their employees. So you can create PowToons videos that are distributed to the whole global network. It, it's really possible um, to do that. And people are just the feedback we receive from some of the people that is, is mind blowing how excited and happy people are to see some of these fantastic videos. So if I click edit this template, we can go directly into the studio. And you'll see here that on the left hand side are the different scenes. And in between the scenes on the left hand side, once this loads, you will see there are transitions in between. Um, and, you know, 
it's really, really easy to, to use, really intuitive. And what's really important to note is that when you do open up the studio, any template that you choose, it's always going to open up in edit mode. OK, and this is the simplest form of editing in Powtoon. So it doesn't throw too much at you. No timeline at the bottom, no library to the right. And really, you can start changing and playing around because everything on this on this screen here, for example, with this text, we can move. We can move the characters around. We can resize them. We can click on the text. We can change the color. But what I want to start with and what's really important is, and I'm just going to slightly make this smaller, is to save you time and effort and to make sure that you have a structure to you, Powtoon. And also, in fact, even if you, you, you're creating and you've got an idea and you want, you know, buy-in from stakeholders or buy-in, yeah, stakeholders internal, external, whatever it may be, to make it more easy for people to understand the vision that you're looking to create, to make them start thinking about what you're looking to create and, and get that buy-in, you want to have a storyboard um, that's ready because also, this is going to save you time and effort when you're creating. So I can start taking this, and this is on compliance strategies. Everyone always likes a gift, but they can't always accept it. Um, I just thought it was quite an interesting use case. Um, we're dealing with a large drinks manufacturer who has used Powtoon to create a very um, interesting, because it's normally quite a dull subject, Powtoons on this particular subject. In fact, there's actually quite a few organizations that are using this, and they've got it actually was their top, one of their top 10 videos for the whole of 2020. Um, and this is a, an extremely a large or drinks organization. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take this four compliance strategies. In fact, I'm even going to take the this part here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to place the story, uh, storyboard onto the other screen. And then I'm going to click into here. And I'm just, what I'm going to do is just click Control V and copy that in. You can see it's opened up the this here with all the different fonts. Well, I want to change the size of this. So I just place that down to 40 and click enter. Um, OK, that's looking a bit uh, looking a bit better. If I want, for example, to change the font easy, just click the drop down here and you've got access to 65 different fonts that you can choose from. I'm just struggling with my broadband at the moment, but here we go. It's loading. Absolutely fantastic. And you can see all these different fonts, really good fun. But if you want to upload your font for branding purposes, then it's easy to do. All you have to do is click on here and click upload your font. You can upload in these various files right here, upload your font. Once it's uploaded, you could then, for example, click the star sign and save it to your favorites. Every time you go into your account, it's always there. And here we can see Helvetica and I can just change it to Helvetica. Very, very easy to do. Um, again, if I want to go back to my storyboard and I take the next piece of content and I can change it here. And then maybe I can make this slightly smaller and it fits perfectly into this particular scene, into this particular sh gray shape that you can see. Very easy to do. And again, if I want to change that, to the Helvetica, I can go to my favorites and it's saved there and I click that. Now we've got the matching consistent consistent font here. Secondly, what you want to do once you've done your once you've changed your content, you want to start swapping out the different objects or characters that you see. For example, different templates may have you no, know, for example, an office type scene where you've got a plant pot, a computer screen, a table, you might want to swap them out. It might even be a scene like this, for example, um, where you've got different images of a phone, of a, of a um, laptop or whatever it may be. You might want to swap them out because you need to align it with what you're trying to create. So here, maybe I don't want these particular characters. I can easily just click on any, any objects or assets that you see, characters or props, and I can just click swap. And then that opens up the library. But, you know, once I pick something, the library will close because I'm keeping it in edit mode. Here I can just go to my characters that I've created and I can take this particular character here, which is my, sort looks a little bit like myself. And it's got the Powtoon logo and I can place him in here. 
you know, and if I wanted to, I could change the different pose as well. But, you know, in the first instance, maybe I just swapping out the uh, characters that I want to swap out and, I, and maybe I just move them around slightly. Now, in behind this character here, we can see that there is this orange circle. Now, some of these shapes are actually locked because our designers that design these templates, and we've got about 200 templates, by the way, and adding to them all the time, they've actually locked the particular shape. So this shape isn't locked, right? Um, so I can change the color. But this shape here, this orange shape behind the six, is actually locked and can only be unlocked if you go into create mode. And the reason we've got a locking function is for branding consistency. When you're creating when you're creating content or you want other people in the teams to create content, you want them to stick to branding guidelines, maybe to not go off piece and start going rogue and designing something that doesn't look right, doesn't fit in. And that's why we have the locking feature. But in this instance, um, you know, I could change that orange circle there. But to make it a little bit quicker, if you stay in edit mode and click on the scene and just click settings, I can then open up the color picker which has lots of different basic colors. You can add in the hex codes to get your branding colors. You've got my colors down here where you can actually add up to 12 different colors in here. So every time you go into your account, it's always there. Now, eventually, we're going to be bringing out even better um, ability of um, sharing or well, branding capabilities where you can share the different colors with the teams and you can share the different fonts with the teams. That is on the roadmap, I believe, for Q2. So watch out for that. But here we've got the different colors. And I can just pick, for example, let's say I want to change the majority of this background to green to match my branding colors. It's done the majority for me. This gray box here and this orange shape here, they're locked. You know, I quite like that orange shape in the top behind with the green. It actually looks OK. I'm going to leave it. Um, but in the first instance, you've changed your font uh, and you've changed the content. You've then changed the different characters or props. And then you have changed the colors to match branding. Now, if you go through the, your particular scenes, for example, and um, let's say we, we take a little bit more thing, you can see how quickly it is to do. So I, I changed my, um, I changed this here. I make it a little bit smaller um, and I take this because this is actually my title and I can just change this and I can make that smaller. You can see I'm doing it in, you know, pretty quickly here, but it, it's really easy to do. Um, and I've taken this all off my storyboard. Again, it's saving me time and effort. It's also given me um, structure. Sorry, just having a bit of an issue with my broadband here. Um, and I'm just going to get rid of this. And then, you know, again, I'm going to change my background to the, the green. So imagine that my branding is green. I've changed the majority of that. And maybe this particular um, this particular character here, I want to swap him out. And I'm going to swap him out. And I'm going to add this here. Now, what we can see is below here is actually one of the um props that that i sort of was alluding to you've got about twelve thousand different props to choose from and we've got lots of different looks that essentially the library aligns to when you pick a particular look which i'll go through very shortly and you'll see the different types of looks um, but here let's say for example you want to swap this particular prop out you'll see that there's lots of different categories of props that you can choose from some are static some are moving and this particular prop sits in the tech and web folder. And maybe, you know, I don't want this particular prop because it's not it's not the look that I want or it's not aligned to what I want. Maybe I want something that's a bit more gadgety and moving. Um, maybe this robot arm, you know, this is just a demo. So take it as it is. But here we go. I, I place that in there and you can see that it's uh, sitting in the background now. And of course, you can resize these because these are all SVG files and they can all be moved. And for example, let's say hey, we want to remove these dots here because they're in the in the way. Um, and you can see that this is moving, but what you can actually do, if you click on any of these moving 
props, you can actually go to settings and you have the ability to change the animations, to have no animations, to loop it, to play in a loop. And it all depends on what you're, you're looking to achieve with your PAL2. So in terms of edit mode, you know, that's the best way to create. Get your storyboard, create that vision, saving you time and effort, providing you with that structure. You then change the content. You change the font to match your branding. Swap out the different characters, the different props that you see to align with what you're looking to create, and then change the branding colors, um, the predominant branding colors of this particular scene. And I can let you know that you also have a grid here at the top for alignment. You're able to optimize for different places that you're going to be distributing your content, whether that's social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and you have a zoom in function here, and you can always play the particular scene just to check it out. I'm just going to go back to transitions because I realize I did jump quickly over that. But transitions are really important and often not thought about too much. When you're using transition, I definitely recommend keeping it consistent and not using lots of different transitions throughout the video because I don't think it, it looks too professional and it looks a little bit messy. We've got some fantastic transitions here that can sort of split up the content that you are creating. You've got the glitch one here, triangle split. These are some of the newest ones. This glitch one is funny because some people, of our, some of the customers have actually created with this, provided it to stakeholders, and they said, you've got an issue with your power tin. Uh, actually, it was just this glitch particular scene. But anyway, take a look at these and, and have a look at, at using them because they can be really, uh, they can really make a, a, a video look super professional. And remember to keep them consistent um, when you are creating. But what I would like to do now is quickly just take a drink of water. Excuse me. And I want to go into create mode. And this is where Powtoon really opens up. And there's so you have so much um, options at your fingertips to create. Um, and, it, it, you know, everything's really intuitive from the timeline to the way the library works. Um, and it, it it's. It takes a bit of time, you know, 45 minutes to an hour learning curve, of getting used to it and looking through the different templates, how they move and if you feel comfortable with them and, and starting off how I've told you. But then once you open up create mode, you have the library to the right. And what I talked about earlier was the different looks that Powtoon has that really sets Powtoon apart from its competitors because we have so many different looks to choose from. And the reason for this is because of the amount of different character sets that we have. Um, from the modern edge look, which is which has business attire, very uh, it's you know it's not too cartoony. It's still very professional, and it's definitely one of my favourite looks. So when you pick a look, the whole library aligns with that particular look because we recommend keeping the same look when you are creating, not to mix, for example, a whiteboard character with or prop with a modern edge look because you can see the vast difference at the bottom here of the different scenes. This is great for explainer videos and something you could look to use. Cartoon is great, um, all dependent on the audience you're looking to distribute your content to. But this is more fun, more humorous and has some of our first ever character sets in there. Moving on to infographic when data is king and you're trying to tell a story with data. You're looking for those moving charts and you really want people to sit up and take note and really take those key results in and key indicators in. This is something that you can look to use. And we are looking to add dynamic charts where you have the ability to type in the numbers and the charts will be able to move um, with that. Now, we do have um, animated charts at the moment, but they are not dynamic. This is something we're looking to bring out Q free. So look out for that. And then the real life videos. And this is, I feel, actually the most powerful way you have real look videos. We have stock footage and the ability to build block by block a story where you can add a voiceover in the background. You can add some punchy music uh, some, um, from the music library that you have access to and build a very, very powerful story when you're creating. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to click on Modern Edge and the whole library is now aligned to that. And I want to take you through the sharing capabilities once again. So you, I talked about how you share a Powtoon, but if you wanted to share a particular scene, for example, and you created an intro or an outro for your team, or you created a particular slide deck and you want people to work on certain scenes, 
you can easily save any of these scenes and share them with the team or the project that has been created. So all we have to do is go to scenes and click on save scene. And what this does, this then populates into my scenes, which is your scene library. So every time you go into your account, the scenes are always there and you can see it's just populated beautifully right there. I can then hover over that scene and then share it with a particular team that I am part of. So let's imagine it's on for an onboarding and I can share it and then that's done. And what that looks like, any team or folder or project that you are a part of, it's going to look like this. So I go to onboardings, it's now sitting there. Everyone that's part of that folder can go into it. Okay. That's really easy to do. Within the scenes category, you also have access to lots of different pre built templates by our designers that you can use. For example, this one, please feel free to use this. Um, and these can be used for any purposes. You could even turn this into a GIF and send it out to an invite to someone or to announce something. You know, you can have a look at these and, and think about how you how you want to use them. But these are all uh, available to you to use. Have a look at those different categories. And again, with the different looks, the library will align and you'll have even more options to choose from. I'm now going to move um, down to, um, well, we're going to take, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to go back to what we created. And I'm actually going to go to a new scene. I'm not going to change any of the content because we haven't got too much time, but I want to introduce you to the media category. One of my favorite categories. This is a great category because you have the ability to upload your own media into my media folder, which is just like my scenes folder. You can add media here. You can upload your videos up to three minutes. We're going to be eventually increasing that to five minutes and beyond. But I always recommend when you are looking to create your videos to keep them short, compact and succinct because it's all about short pieces of visual communications nowadays, keeping the viewers engaged um, and also grabbing their attention where you only have nine seconds, I believe, um, to grab their attention um, because everyone's has so much thrown at them with their mobile phones and their advertising left, right and center. You need to keep your videos short, two minutes max. If you're creating longer videos, look to make them, um, convert them into more digestible chunks for your viewers. But moving back to here, you can upload your, images, JPEG, PNG, GIFs, even SVG files, and again, the MP4 star side of things. Now, any of these uh, here, you can simply click on the footage, and again, you can share, um, you can, oh, you can share, let's do that, you can again share with any teams or projects that you're a part of, okay? And what that will look like is just like with scenes, these are the different folders and projects. That I am a part of. Now down here, you've got access to about 15 million high def um, pictures. Okay, now these are powerful. You can hover over them to look at them. But what's more powerful, as I told you about the real look side of things, is the story blocks integration. Now those images and these videos are all royalty free, so you can use them as much as you want. You don't need to worry about anything. And you've got a vast library of over 15 million high def videos here from three seconds to a minute long. You can hover over them. Here's a, a money one, for example, and you can see how long they are. You know, if you wanted to find out, um, let's say you wanted to put in, uh, let's put hospitality. I hope I've spelt that right. You'll be able to find lots of different videos around this particular um, sector. I mean, I'm saying hospitality because it's I was talking about compliance strategies with dealing with gifts and hospitality. This may not be exactly what I want to find. Um, but, you know, as we haven't got too much time, I can just pick something that's that's interesting. And, you know, I'm sure we're all pretty hungry now. I'm always hungry. Um, and you can, I'm going to pick this particular video. And it actually is asking me, do I want to increase the length or trim the video? Because the length of the slide at the moment is eight seconds, but it's shorter than the video. So if I want to actually increase the length to 16 so the video plays throughout, then I can do that. Or I can just click trim and it's going to trim it for me and it places it in to the background. So you can do this with any of your videos and you can also upload your own footage that you've created and add that. You know, it could be an interview, for example, 
and you want to have maybe a video title at the bottom of the screen, you can have that. You can do that in Powtoon. You can add different props to a video that you've uploaded. You can add different props to any videos that you've used from this, the Storyblocks integration. It doesn't matter. But I want to show you um, that there's a slight issue here when you do create add up when you do upload a video and there's text in behind, you can't actually see it. So I'm going to move away from this category now and I'm going to introduce you to shapes. Now in the shapes category, you've got lots of different options to choose from, from basic shapes to animated shapes that are really cool, where you can add uh, different graphs, which I spoke about earlier, where you can look to add in different um, elements here into the back of it, behind your text, for example. Let's have a look at these. Lots of different ones here where you can add behind your text. You can change the color. You can change the animation. You can change the size. Um, and image frames as well, which is really interesting because at the moment you can take any of these image frames and add in a GIF or a picture, but soon you'll be able to actually upload your own videos to it. So you'll be able to actually resize um, one of these laptops, for example, this image frame or uh, maybe a watch, and you'll actually be able to put the image inside of that, um, sorry, the video inside of that, which can really create an even more powerful and engaging piece and a piece of uh, content to your to your videos. So here, what I really wanted to introduce you to was um, sort of a workaround of how to show this text in behind. So jot this down um, so you remember. Um, if I take this shape here, I can, what all I have to do is take the shape and just add it right here and just bring it across the screen and turn it to white. But then what's great about Powtoon is if you hit the settings gear, you've got all these different options here. But I'm going to go to the arrange function because this arrange function really can give you that added element of depth to your Powtoon and gives you lots of flexibility when you're creating. And I can push this particular shape to the back, which pushes my, my uh, font through. So we can now see the front. Obviously, I can't see that video in behind. If I click settings, I can click opacity and just drag that down. And then now I can see this particular text in behind. And it's now going to work. But moving on to the next um, phase, I suppose, of this of this um, webinar is to show you the timeline. And this is really important. Definitely want you to familiarize yourself with this. We have a great tutorial. Um, on it, which is only three minutes long. That's uh, very helpful. But the timeline is very intuitive and easy to use. And I'm going to start with when you actually upload or add an asset, a, an image, a shape onto the screen, wherever this playhead is, that's where the shape is going to fall below. OK, so what you want to note is this particular shape is coming on at the 6.5 second mark here, right? If I played this right now, it's not going to work the shape inside the background. OK, it doesn't work. So what I need to do is actually drag this shape all the way to the bottom. And I'm just going to turn this down because it's rather loud. And it, actually, what I'm showing you, this is a sound control. And you can control the volume of the sound, by the way, and add in a voice over here. But I'm not going to don't want to confuse you too much here. But that is a sound control. Um, but if I play this now, it's going to work. So you can see that the shapes in behind the background, then the text comes you know, over the shape, which is exactly how I want it to work. So what you need to do with the timeline, you need to really familiarize yourself with it. Um, have a look at the different shapes that come on and off the screen here. Essentially, the timeline does denote when a, you know, when the text or a character or a shape comes on and off the screen. And you can see that here, for example, you've got all the different objects that are moving at this point and coming on, all these four uh, free objects, and when they're actually leaving the stage. Also on the timeline, you can see the different options to for the enter effects, right, left, up, down. You can add a sound, a ping, a bang, a bush, a bong. Um, if you changed everything here right now, it would change all three. You do have the ability to, um, you know, click on the screen, for example, and then individually go to that object and click the animation or click the effect. 
Now, for example, for this effect, I could actually add one of our newest effects, which is the drawing effect, which is really cool. Um, let's just show you that quickly. So that's a pretty cool effect that you could use. I just noticed we've got a question in. Is it possible to send a export created Powtoon from a private account to an enterprise account? The link I see from sharing sending the video doesn't open up the enterprise account website. Is it possible? I'm just going to read that again. Is it possible to send an export a created Powtoon from public? Pri you can send it from a public to an enterprise account. So you can send the Powtoons. If you have a public account and you've now got a business account, we can transfer that over. If you email enterprise support at paltoon.com, they'll be able to do that for you. And then you are able to go to in, into your Paltoon and get the shareable link, which to, takes you to the player page. And this shareable link is not indexed in Google. But if you share it with someone, they are able to then share it with someone else. <coughs> excuse me. And they are able to view it. So it's good if maybe someone hasn't got a license or you're sending it out to clients, or well, if you, someone hasn't got a license and you want feedback from them, the shareable link is a, is a good option. I will go through the export options very soon. But now I would like to just go quickly to the sound options that you have. Um, you've got lots of different sound options. You've got um, options to upload your own music, for example. You can do that via MP3, AOG, AAC. If any of you in a, a pop band or play any rock music, you've got the royalties. You can upload that and add that into the background. Or if you've paid for any music, of course, you are welcome to, to do that yourself. You can add a voiceover easily as well. Um, you can just click, click, click add voiceover, click record. And we always recommend clicking the toggle up here to do it slide by slide, because if you're going to do the whole thing at once and you make that mistake, then you are unfortunately going to have to do it all again. I do recommend it doing slide by slide. and also. Maybe investing in a desktop mic, not really using your laptop or PC mic, even though that gives an OK sort of rendition of your voice. A sort of desktop mic at $20, $30, 20, 30 pounds, 40 euros. This is something that I would is a worthwhile investment to give you that more professional sound. Um, I mean, you can, for example, if I go to uh, voiceover, add voiceover, you do have the option of voice bunny or i recommend fiverr f-v-e-r-r.com they have actual uh well, they have paltoonists on there but also voiceover artists that are relatively cheap that can give you the desired outcome that you're looking for that's something that you could look to use um but also what's really cool and about paltoon is the story blocks integration to loads of different music tracks twelve thousands, i i believe um from dramatic to motivational, to chill. Um, you know, if, if uh, for example, I clicked on edgy, um, we could just listen to one. And of course, the music that you choose is really essential to what you're trying to portray to your audience and it really sets the tone. And I really noticed that, for example, when I'm watching something, you've got the right music, it's upbeat, it's happy, you know, I'm dancing away, I feel more engaged, and I'm really taking the, the, the content in that you're trying to get people to care, connect, and act with. So it's definitely something to really think about. I always like to add a piece of music to make it more vibrant when I'm creating pieces of content. So that's the sound uh, category for you. We do have lots of other categories as well, just having a little look at the uh, time to make sure that um, we are not running out of time. Yes, you will get a copy of this recording, uh, Karen, definitely. This will be sent directly to your email address. Remember, you can reach out to me at Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, dot Hennig, that's H-E-N-I-G, at paltoon.com. Happy to answer any of your questions. But I'm going to move on now to the next category. Um, we talked about props and that's characters. And I did allude to this earlier that you can create characters. We do have a character builder. Um, for example, these, all these three here are the newest and latest characters that we've added to uh, Powtoon's armor and to your armor 
at your disposal where they're using the most lifelike movements um, and latest gaming technology. And you can completely customize these. And we're going to be adding new body types, gender neutral body types to these. Um, we're going to be adding uh, religious headgear as well, which we don't currently have at the moment. That's coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, and we're adding to these all the time. So, for example, you know, you could go to here and you could create a character. Um, let's say we're taking this one here. All you have to do is click on the face and you can edit the character. And it's fantastic. It's good fun. It's a little bit like The Sims if you played that on the PC or the PlayStation. Uh, and you can start changing the different pieces of clothing. You've got a base layer, a mid layer and an outer layer. And quite a lot of these different garments here are actually new. Some of the gym wear here for, in particular only came out recently. Um, we've got the um, jumpers here as well that are really cool. Uh, you know, but for example, if I wanted to pick a particular jumper and then and please don't uh, blame me for the uh, I'm not too great with fashion myself. So I'm just building something out quickly here. Um, just to let you know, actually, before I jump the jump, jump too quickly in, in front of myself, the three dots that you see means you can add your logo to it for branding consistency and to make your audience resonate with what you're creating. I can click the plus button there, hit upload. And I can click on Paltoon logo, for example, and I can add that to the particular um, scene and I can just do that and zoom in a bit, zoom in a bit more. And just, just want to make sure this works nicely. OK, so there you go. Got the Powtoon logo there. If I want to change for branding purposes, and remember, I use that green at the start. I can hit green. I can even go to her bottoms or trousers, as we call them here in England, and I can click green. OK, and now she's starting to resemble what I'm looking for. I'm going to have to add that again. Um, and this logo probably isn't the best logo for me to use because I have to resize it slightly, but I'm sure you guys have got the uh, logos that you really want to use. And let me just make that a little bit smaller. Okay, and we place that there and I click, I can click finish to move on, but I'm gonna show you the different bottoms you can choose from different skirts, adding to this all the time. Different uh, footwear as well. There's a pair of looks like vans there. Uh, football boots and also accessories it's really cool this is really new you can have a cap depending on what if you're in the construction industry you can have a, a helmet you can add the logo to that a woolly hat as two you can still add the logo to that you can see the three dots different glasses even safety glasses um and also a face mask which again you can brand to the colors um and lastly you can change the head the hair the eyes the nose and the mouth. Can't see her mouth there because she's got the mask on, but I can click finish and I can save it. And then just like with your scenes, with your media, with your Powtoons, you can share that character, that branded character, that mascot. Maybe you're creating a, lead a leadership talking heads piece. You want to create the leadership team. You can do that with the character builder. I recommend you do the, the, the leadership team or your managers are going to love it. And then you can have her there. And remember, you can resize these. You can move them around. Um, oh, where's she gone? Have I deleted her? Just bear with me. There she is. And then I can also go to pose and I can change the different poses. Lots of different options there, adding to it all the time. Now, I've got about six minutes left, OK? And let's say we're done. We've created our Powtoon. It took me one to two hours. I wanted to familiarize myself, wanted to use my storyboard, change some of the colors, the content, change some of the characters, add some new props into a line with my vision. I'm done. I then want to preview it. Let's watch it. Click preview. And it will play. And we can see that nice background uh, in the back, that nice sort of serving food 
getting very hungry now. That's a, that's a, a nice background there. But, you know, again, you have options to build out your stories in the background there and, and you could just search in the library and find what you're looking for. We can look at it here and if we're happy with it, we can then actually export directly from here in a number of different ways. However, the easiest way to export for me and, and what I recommend is actually not doing it via preview mode, but it's actually going to the export flow here where you can get the shareable link. And again, this is what I used originally at the start, what you saw. OK, I haven't copied it. Let's try again. That's it. And it takes you to the Powtoon player page. And it's great because, again, you can send this out to your clients, to people that don't have a license and you want feedback. You can present in this way, which I did at the start. You can present slide by slide where the actual animations move and then will stop. And then you can talk and you can actually present in the way that I am doing here in preview mode now with a new feature that is coming out called Powtoon Capture. And that's what I've been using all along. Um, and I will talk about that very soon once I go through the different ways to distribute. OK, so, so here you can see this is the player page. And again, you can slide, do the slideshow like this. And it even actually plays the music as well. Also, you can export to MP4 1080p which is good for large presentations. But if you haven't got, um, well, if you want to send it by email, do 720 because that keeps it under 25 meg. Um, you can also download into PowerPoint, into a PDF, a JPEG, and also a GIF, which is really cool. You can pick up to six seconds for the GIF. You can add this to an email. You could upload this to an intranet, to an LMS, to invite people to a webinar, to get people interested in a project that you're working on, to get feedback on something. This is something that can really spark a lot of interest and engagement with what you're, what you're creating. And then lastly, embed video if you want to upload to your LMS, to your intranet, if you would like. And lastly, without further ado, I want to show you how to capture, well, which is what I am using right now. Um, just bear with me. I know we're right at the hour here, but I wanted to show you Powtoon Capture, which is what I have been using this whole time, where you can actually present and add that more personable, engaging feel to a webinar, which we've done today. I hope you found it very personal and engaging. Um, and this is keeping you at the front and center of, uh, of what you are talking about, of, of portraying information to your audience, getting that message across in a different format. And that's another part of Powtoon that is going to be added to the business platform, hopefully by the end of April. So watch out for this. You can also record videos. And we use this internally um, to send messages to our peers, to, to take them through a screen sharing session. You can share any screen. Um, for example, as a customer success manager, you may come to me and ask Dan, I'm not sure what to do here. What do you recommend? I record a video. It's more engaging. It's more personable. You can watch it in your own time. And, you know, you can go back and forth and watch it time and time again to make sure that you're, you're doing what the messaging is, is telling you or, or whatever it may be. But this is the way forward. And, and this is what Powtoon can offer you with the ability to create animated videos, to create whiteboard explainer videos to create real look videos to create and host webinars create recordings create gifs even downloading into documents that are actually pdfs pngs even though they can be static they can be still be very colorful people learn in lots of different ways you may want to add a pdf document along with a host of videos but i hope this has been really helpful and thank you all so much for your for your questions. We are at the end of the hour, and I just got one more e uh, question to answer. Is it planned to incorpor incorporate screen recording similar to SAP Enable Now? To be honest with you, Kay, I actually not too sure what SAP Enable does. Um, I mean, screen recording, yes. If if SAP Enable does the screen recording and that I could just record this, then yes, it does a recording. And you can, you know, for example, change 
this to make it larger, smaller. You can change the shape. Uh, you can remove the audio screen only, cam only. You've got all these different options. So I hope that's um, answered your question. And uh, I hope this has been really helpful for you. I wish you all the best with your power tunes and look forward to hearing from you soon. All the best. Uh, stay safe out there. Take care. Bye.